from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Automation Anywhere, Imagine. Brought to you by Automation Anywhere. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Midtown Manhattan at the Automation Anywhere Imagined 2019. We we're here last year, it's about 1,500 people, and really Automation Anywhere is, is really hot in the RPA space, robotic process automation, but it's really a lot more than that. It's not just automating some processes, it's really about new ways to work, personal digital assistance, and, and really changing the game. We're excited to have our next guest, first time on theCUBE. He's Prince Coley, the CTO of Automation Anywhere. Prince, great to see you. Thank you, Jeff. Good to be here. Yeah, so you weren't here last year, so I'm curious to get your general impressions of, of the event and kind of the, the scene here with, uh, with the Automation Anywhere ecosystem. Of course. Uh, I wasn't here last year, I'd heard a lot about it, uh, but the sense of excitement, the sense of growth, the sense of opportunity, you know, that is there in every, everyone. Uh, the number of customers who's, who are here and who are excited to be here, partners who are here and who are really happy to be here, and of course, you know, the team, uh, my own team, uh, it's just, uh, just, just a sense of excitement and you know, uh, the fact that we are on a hockey stick, uh, you know, in terms of growth, uh, is just palpable. Right, so I'm curious to get your take. You've been in the Valley for, for a long time and, and really the, the RPA theme is about this kind of digital, digital workers. Um, in fact, they get roles, they get names, they talk about them on stage like they're people. And the idea is that, that we all have our own, you know, assistant, which has been talked about forever, but maybe you kind of had an offshore person you could help dial in your laundry. Nothing like what we're talking about today. So, as you look back and kind of the evolution as to how we got here, what's kind of your take on, on the role of, of a personal digital assistant? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, the way, uh, in my view, the way it evolved was that uh, if it's similar to cloud computing, I think the idea you know, that these things could happen, I mean, you know, Star Trek had it, right? Right. So I think those things have, as an idea, have existed, but usually it was in fantasy. Uh, but what has happened in the last, I would say, five or 10 years is that uh, computing, the need for automation across applications, the need for work to be less mundane, the need for creativity in a human job, those have become really important. And therefore, uh, the, the, how work, the definition of work is evolving. What can be automated, therefore must be automated. And it is not automation within an application, it is automation across applications, across processes, uh, across uh, whichever applications from whichever vendors there may be without changing the application itself. Right. And that, uh, with the changing role of AI and the acceptance of AI, I think has, created, has allowed people to start accepting the notion of a digital worker. It's pretty interesting, one of the topics of the keynote was that the people were the integration point between a lot of these That's right. That's systems, right. yeah. super yeah. inefficient. That's right. um, and what I think is interesting on the AI front and the automation, the place I see it just a little bit every day is on, is on Google, right? A, an app that most people are familiar with, whether it's Google Maps and suddenly it's got restaurants on it and suddenly it's got reviews on it mm -hmm. and suddenly it's got mm -hmm. you know street view or whether it's now on the email where suddenly it's guessing my response. It's okay. auto-filling even before I start to That's complete correct. my email. And it really shows that it's this ongoing continuous innovation empowered by AI and a boatload of data that lets these applications do, as you said, things that before would be considered magical. Uh, uh, absolutely, uh, and you know, if you look at uh, the digital worker paradigm, Right, um, it's not. Um, uh, if you look at a great example of, of a digital worker, for example, um, an AP clerk, right, an account payables clerk. Uh, think of an invoicing function. An invoice has to comes in. Someone has to read it, interpret it. Uh, the <coughs> excuse me, the formats of inter invoices are very different across vendors. Reading, interpreting, tying it to a PO, making sure the PO is correct, making sure the PO is valid, was issued. Uh, at the right time, the item is not late, someone has signed up. There are so many things one has to do. And a person has to do all that today. But it is really a very boring um, you know, work. There is, uh, you know, you just follow a set of steps. There is no judgment involved, really. What an AP digital worker allows you to do <coughs> is to be able to read that document, interpret it, take all the steps that, that are necessary, and then be able to do that job 24 hours a day and allow the offloading of this mundane, boring work, right, right. From, a, from a human. So they can be more creative, they can actually make the process better, as opposed to just following you know, a set of simple rules. Right, it's interesting, one of the earlier conversations too, within defining that process so that you can automate it, you're going to un, un, uh, unwind inefficiency, you're going to unwind 
biases. You're going to unwind a whole bunch of stuff to get it to the automated yeah. process. So there's all kinds of secondary benefits beyond simply freeing up your time to do yeah. more That's creative work. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, and I think uh, you know, as you said, there are biases. There are also things that uh, must work together in enterprise, and today don't. And you know, the vendors, the application vendors are not going to do that. It's not in their own interest. Uh, so someone has to, and we are the fabric that brings it together. Right. And, and, and just people as an integration point, I thought that was, yes, that was classic. That's yeah, like the yeah. worst part, yes, the right. worst place you want to be. Yes, right. and, and then the, the, the other concept that I think doesn't come out enough is a lot of people are com, com thinking about RPA as a rip and replace for the people. Mm. It's not rip and replace at all. Not it's at really all. augment, yeah. just like you augment with your laptop, your phone, That's other right. software That's applications right. that yeah. you're working with every day. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great point. We have never, we have never seen any customer even talking about ripping and replacing people. Uh, what they're trying to do is give people the tools and the augmentation necessary for them to make their own life make make their own life better, and that improves the morale of the employees. That improves uh, uh, the the, uh, the company's productivity, of course, right? And and probably the best output, the best way to measure that, it improves their customer satisfaction because customers are able to get credit cards faster, able to get responses faster, claims get registered faster. All these things work very well. Right. Yeah. So when you sit back and look at the whole technology stack, you know, some really fundamental changes in microprocessor power, networking speed, um, storage, now cloud that puts all this thing, you know, this access together, and then you add the AL and, and the machine learning on top of it. It's really kind of this crazy perfect storm of technologies that are coming together that are enabling this, which we really couldn't we couldn't really do before. That's All it. those pieces weren't there. So as you look forward as CTO, what are some of the things you're excited about? How do you see this kind of evolving over the next little time and mid time? I've never go long time. Long <laughs> time is forever in the future and we don't long even guess. Long time, what, I, I can, <laughs> two years. I can, I can, I can predict <laughs> one thing for sure about long time, that whatever we say today will be wrong. In the long term. Short to medium term, I think we'll be, probably will be right. I think short to medium term, uh, what I see happening is that AI becoming a part of pretty much every layer of every product. Uh, for us, for example, uh, as an intelligent RPA platform, uh, AI is embedded in, in the interaction with the application, interaction with the screen, interaction with the person, interaction with the documents. So, uh, uh, whichever way we interact with the outside world, as well as how we get better ourselves, AI is embedded in that. And then we use many third party, as well as our own bots, to add AI enabled skills. For example, uh, Understanding if a credit card claim, uh, if an insurance claim should be denied or not, a credit card should be issued or not. So all these things become part of uh, how you know AI helps us in day to day. Right. So I think that will be the biggest change. Um, I think people, I mean, uh, the example that you brought up, right, Google email. I don't think that people predicted that would be the first use of AI in Google. Uh, but it is a very uh, useful, you know, I use it all the time because it happens to get better all the time, you know, it knows all my phrases, it knows how I respond. I think that will happen again and again. Right, right. Just like spell check, the, the great, the yes. great uh, unwashed uh, <laughs> AI that we've yes. all been using for, uh, for years and, and years and years. <laughs> 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 all right, Prince, so the final word is really, I think that's important is you're talking about the intelligence. Not, It's not just a, a, a process that we apply software to, just but this kind of ongoing uh, iterative intelligence applied, whether it's machine learning or, or AI, to make it better and better yes, and better and better. Right. It's not just going to be static. Uh, not at all, not at all. I think it, it, it understands what it needs to be doing and it then provides ideas on how it could be doing better and then it integrates that, those ideas back. Uh, everything gets better over time and everything that a human finds, repetitive, high volume, boring, uh, will eventually get farmed off to an augmentation, a digital worker or a digital assistant. I know, by the way, the, the number of open recs is still not going to go down, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, <laughs> if you remember the ATM world, right? When ATM started coming in, people started worrying, tellers will go away and the number of jobs will go down. Actually, banks started doing really well, right? And they started hiring more people. The nature of the jobs changes. The, the, the value that humans provide, you know, uh, go higher and higher. Up the stack. But, but that's what happens eventually. Right. Yeah. All right, Prince, well, uh, Congratulations for you for jumping on a rocket ship. I'm sure it's going to be a really fun <laughs> ride. Fun, yes. And uh, having us here at the show. Excellent, thank you Jeff. Thank All you, right, okay. he's Prince, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE, where automation anywhere imagined, 2019 in Midtown Manhattan. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.